Thank God for the internet. Thank God for social media. Thank God for Facebook. Twitter is how Trump talked to the people. Facebook was going to be how he won. In the official 10-week campaign, we served about 1 billion targeted digital adverts, mostly via Facebook. In the last few years, politicians and political campaigners around the world have credited Facebook for helping them take power. And it's not just rhetoric. If you look at their campaign budgets, you see that Facebook or one of its subsidiaries, Instagram or WhatsApp, has become more and more central to many elections and referendum campaigns in the US, the UK, Italy, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Brazil and on. But why are all these politicians and campaigners using Facebook? And what can Facebook do that other technology platforms or media organisations can't? Election campaigns are communications campaigns. They are about communicating why you should support one candidate party and not another, telling you how you can support them with your money, your voice and your vote, and getting you to do it. In the early days of election campaigning, before the arrival of TV, parties relied heavily on their supporters to knock on doors to convince their friends to get out the vote. Once everyone had a TV, the attention shifted. But then the internet came along, offering a cornucopia of new opportunities to communicate, to connect and to campaign, and that changed everything again. Facebook wasn't built for politics. It was built as a social network, but it grew incredibly quickly and soon became the place that a large proportion of the electorate visited every day. In the eight years from its foundation in Mark Zuckerberg's dorm room to the re-election of Barack Obama in 2012, it grew from zero to one billion users. Though Facebook wasn't built for politics, politicians and campaigners quite quickly realised how useful it could be for them. Facebook was cheaper than TV and you could target your message directly to the people you wanted to reach. You could even slip your message into the space that was populated by messages from people's friends and family, the newsfeed, and get it liked by one of their friends so it came with a ready-made endorsement. And, unlike TV or print media, you could instantly see how people reacted and then adapt your message accordingly. This gave campaigners the chance to adopt a more scientific approach to political advertising. Campaigners could send out different messages to different audiences and measure the response rates in order to see which messages worked best with which audiences. So useful was this that during the 2016 US election, the Trump campaign was sending out around 50,000 different messages a day, tweaking each one depending on how people reacted. By 2016, Facebook had become a sort of one-stop shop for political campaigners. They could use the platform to connect directly with constituents, to market test messages, to fundraise, to organise and to mobilise. But is there evidence to show that Facebook actually works? Well, we know that it can make a difference to turnout. A 61 million person study of voters in the 2010 midterm elections found that adding the I voted button to people's Facebook page prompted more people to go out and vote. It also appears to have an impact on voter registration. In California in 2016, registrations leapt from 9,000 to over 120,000 after a registration reminder was posted on Facebook. And we know that millions of voters interact with candidates and parties on the platform. Campaigners themselves are certainly convinced. They have been spending a larger and larger proportion of their budgets on Facebook and its subsidiaries since 2008. In the UK, from spending nothing on Facebook in the 2010 election, the party spent over a million pounds in the 2015 campaign and over three million in 2017. These figures are, of course, dwarfed by the amount spent in the US. In the 2020 presidential campaign, it is estimated that $3 billion 
will go towards online advertising, much of that on Facebook. Is it a good thing that Facebook has become so important to election campaigns? Well, critics of Facebook had pointed to three problems with its use in elections. Transparency, money and privacy. Up till 2017, the only people who saw political messages sent via Facebook were the sender, the recipient and Facebook themselves. Once they'd been sent, unlike a leaflet or a poster, they disappeared. Meaning that candidates could promise anything to anyone with almost no risk of being called out for lying, hypocrisy or distortion. Equally, it meant that anyone who wanted to could do the best to make mischief. Russia's infamous internet research agency run out of St. Petersburg did just this, spreading disinformation, promoting discord and generally stirring up chaos. Since then, Facebook has, like Google and Twitter, set up a political advertising archive where, should you have a few days to spare, you can trawl through thousands of ads sent on behalf of candidates and causes. This partly resolves the transparency problem, but not the one about money. Most countries carefully regulate election spending, but this gets much harder to track if it's being spent online and through platforms like Facebook. Despite their best efforts, for example, various investigative journalists were unable to trace the sources of funding for one of the biggest pro no deal Brexit ad campaigns on Facebook in 2018 to 2019. Most people now know about the 87 million people on Facebook whose details were sold to Cambridge Analytica for its use in the 2016 US election campaign. Many fewer know that Facebook was giving lots of other developers access to user data via applications on the platform. The Cambridge Analytica scandal ended this particular practice, but not Facebook's reliance on knowing as much about you as possible so that it can sell access to you, to advertisers and political campaigners. But could Facebook's political importance be declining? After all the revelations around Cambridge Analytica, combined with rising public awareness of Facebook's surveillance capitalism business model, many left the platform or stopped using it as much as they had previously. Yet, across the globe, its user numbers have continued to grow. By late 2019, the number of monthly users on the platform had risen above 2.4 billion. At the same time, the platform has invested in election war rooms and introduced rules to prevent foreign interference. The Cambridge Analytica affair and other privacy scandals prompted Facebook's founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg to promise a pivot to privacy, which could have a profound effect on how the service is used and its usefulness in elections. It could reduce the effectiveness of Facebook for professional campaigners, though there are also fears based on how the closed platform WhatsApp has been used in elections in India and Brazil, that it could just make campaigning even more opaque. This script was written by Martin Moore, author of Democracy Hacked, An Indispensable Guide to the Relationship Between Technology and Politics. It's available at all good bookshops, wherever you get your books. Mm -hmm.